welcome to The Bare Essentials. My name is DJ, and this is the story of one of my most unforgettable solo trips. All right. It begins at an old Crownland lake, one I worked pretty hard to get into. Pushing through roads that ended up being ATV paths. My truck took a bit of a beating, but that's exactly what it's for. We already had a casualty, because this thing came right off. To take me to places like this. There's some sort of big animal over there. Now what made this trip so special was the thing that I expected the least. It often works that way. Bring yourself to extraordinary places and yes. extraordinary things seem to happen. I have no idea what's happening right now. Never experienced this before. Let me see if I could get it on camera. In my case, a haunting visitor throughout the night. Disappeared now. Guys, that's gotta be the coolest thing. In the days, I found myself enjoying my surroundings and the peace of the land. And I tried my hand at cooking some amazing meals out there. It's so good. I had my chance to practice as well as teach the many skills that may help you in your many adventures to come. So thanks for joining me and hope you enjoy. And we're off. I checked out the lake, it looks beautiful. Let's unpack. There's some sort of big animal over there. I don't know if it's a deer or moose. It didn't sound like a bear. You can see the tops of all these are eaten off by moose. See that? So high it reaches. Just nibbling the tops off, walking by. All the trees over here have it. I think, uh, it definitely heard me, so it's just kind of trying to get away, go in the other direction. So we'll resume our plan to finally get this canoe off and then start making our way to a campsite. Okay, so I'm just going to attach this yoke padding that I just got. Uh, it's really nice. It just straps onto your yoke and it goes over your shoulders just like that uh, for the long portages. This one isn't a long one, but it's just nice to have on there. I sometimes throw this on for the portages. It's easier to carry. All right. And we're off. work oh when you step in that mud it releases the methane it smells bad Ooh. one way to get it on is lift it up to your knee if you can and slide so you're not twisting and lifting at the same time now slide it over Got my tools, ready to roll. Let's bring a second paddle just in case. Nothing's more frustrating than if you break a paddle out there and it's a windy day. It's a bit mucky. Wow, finally made it out and it was definitely worth all the effort today. My poor truck, devastated by trees and right now it's 8.06 p.m. So we're just out at perfect time. So we're gonna get to this site and it looks like it's on an island. So I'm super excited for that. I'm pretty sure there's even brook trout in this lake, but it's getting pretty late and I want to set up everything pretty good and have a nice fire. And I gotta try to find some dry wood as well. So I might not get a chance to fish tonight, but maybe early morning we'll get a line in. Wow, 
this is just spectacular. I have this lake all to myself. There's not even a bit of breeze. It's just a gorgeous summer night. Okay, we just got the site. Let's take a look around and see what's here. First glimpses and fire pit looks pretty good. We got a table over there. Cool little camp kitchen we got. There it is. Here's a stick for hanging some stuff on the tree. So far so good. And the campfire. Oh yes! This is awesome. Guys, check this out. Look at this, firewood galore. Nice dry stuff too. Some of it's even split. I can't believe this. Holy. Guys, this is fantastic. I just love camping culture so much. Whoever's here last left this site in great condition and also left perfect dry wood for me. This is so good, especially when arriving at 8.45 at night to a site and I got a million things to do, like set up my hammock and everything. Well, this is just, just such a treat, honestly. It's all about enjoying nature and helping other people enjoy it too. I'll be sure to stack up a nice bit of firewood on my way out and pay this forward because, wow, this came in clutch right now. Yes! All right, steaks tonight. Woo! Here in Canada, it's wonderful. You get this a lot where people will leave sites really nice and leave stacked firewood for the next person. Perfect little light with citronella. Just enough light so I could set up my hammock on this tree. I'm not sure how much you can see there, but if you can see, I got my hammock set up. I'm not gonna use a tarp tonight because it's blue sky and the next few days are supposed to be just bluebird days. So this is my favorite type of camping, just under the stars. So I'm gonna start to get a fire going and hopefully cook some steaks. See you in a bit. All right, the fire's burned down a good amount, so let's go. Ooh. All right, it's time. I eat these steaks just like a savage out here. This is my favorite way. Mmm. No sides or anything tonight. Just too tired, honestly. So I'm gonna eat this, finish eating the steak, and then head over to bed. Get a good night's rest, and uh, guess I'll see you in the morning. Cheers. something over there. I don't know where it's coming from. It disappeared now. Where is it? Oh my god, I think there's two of them. I have no idea what's happening right now. There's these shrill screams coming from everywhere and I can't really locate them. I've never experienced anything like this.
Oh my god, they're so close. All right, guys. So, I woke up in my sleeping bag to something extremely chilling. I started having these dreams of something screaming. And I woke up and like 10, 15 feet away from me is an owl just looking at me like just screeching just screeching all over and uh, I had never seen an owl in all the times I've been camping and this is my first owl experience so here I was thinking owls made this nice hooting sound and this is what I hear and then next thing you know from behind me, rah, I turn around, there's an owl like 10 feet away perched on the tree just looking at me screaming. Rah. And then this other one. Rah. 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 My gosh. I think they've stopped now. They kind of moved away and got disinterested. I wonder if they have some sort of nest nearby or I don't know. It's oddly 3 a.m. So it just seemed like a sign. It seemed kind of creepy to me. And uh, I don't know. They look they look pretty scary at night. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but anyways, I was following these things. I'm just barefoot walking through this forest. And it's leading me deeper and deeper. <laughs> I was getting the chills doing it, I'm not going to lie. I'm now following the owl deeper into the forest. It's leading me somewhere. <laughs> if I go missing and you find this camera. Also, I'm still in bare feet. Rule number one in the forest. Don't follow the scary noises. really wish these guys would mix in some more like nice owl sounds like how am I supposed to sleep <laughs> this guy was like 10 feet away from me on the tree perch just <laughs> ripping oh, honestly this is the creepiest thing what a disturbing shrill noise that is <laughs> I think I brought this on myself because I was hooting trying to call in owls earlier <laughs> this is not what I expected okay made it back to camp hopefully there's no more owls what an experience I'm glad it didn't lead me to something weird where I'd just die from owls killing me or something I'm not sure so now I'm gonna try to get back to sleep get a few hours of shut eye if I can I mean it's a bit unnerving I'm not gonna lie that was really cool though it's so cool I've never experienced anything like that okay I'll catch you in the morning that was really weird Good morning. So, I definitely slept in. I meant to get up early to go fishing, but my two good friends kept me up all night. <laughs> wow. I would not trade that experience for anything though. That was just so cool. The owls came back and one perched right on this close tree right behind me that close one and i could see its silhouette in the moonlight and it was just screeching and screeching and i was like oh man i'm not gonna get any sleep at all but uh luckily a far owl 
started actually hooting. Like I heard it go, ooh, ooh. You know, like the classic owl sound. And this guy flew over to it. So, left me alone. Okay, we're gonna split some logs and today I'll show you this splitting axe that I have. It's a small splitting axe made by Grants Forest Brook and it's really nice. It's got a metal collar here so that when you're splitting, if you miss or do what's called an overstrike, it's not gonna damage the handle. And the nice thing about a splitting axe is, is if you see here, the shape of it, it's more of a wedge shape than some of the other axes. And it's got a pretty heavy head. I believe it's 2.25 pounds. So it should be able to split pretty easily. Okay, we'll take the big one first. You see this knot right here, and there's a knot right here. When you're splitting, if you're splitting this way, it'll be very hard to split that going down the knot. So you always want to try to pick a straight grain. And you can see inside the fibers change, and that's just hard to get through and split. So I'd be able to split that pretty easily but splitting through here would be very hard. All right, just trying to make this fire pit a little bit better. I kind of want a flat bottom. There we go. Ah. Oh. Here's an old, I think it's a popcorn, one of those Jiffy Pop things, but this doesn't burn down, so that'll just stay in there forever. So, to anyone that's going camping, just try not to leave these things in the fire, because, you know, they end up being garbage and they just sit here forever. So, I'll take this one home. Here's another little can. You often find stuff like this in fire pits. It's just how it goes, I mean. There's lots of people that just don't care or, you know, for one reason or another will leave that, but it's littering in my eyes. I'll take it home myself. Not everyone has the exact same values in life, so you just try to always hold true to your own and, you know, scolding someone else doesn't necessarily always yield the positive result that you want, but the best you could do is just try to live it yourself and live those values each and every time. That's all. This ferro rod is made by Uberleben. I think you pronounce it. Uberleben. Uberleben. And you get a good piece of birch like this that has lots of little pieces of surface area and it should go pretty much first or second strike. Or at least pretty fast. There we go. Oops. Oh, it's still going. <laughs> and we'll just set that on top. Okay, so it's 10.38 by the time this has just started going. We'll see how long it lasts without me putting anything else on this. We'll just let it burn now. Okay, so it's about 10 minutes in. I'm just gonna boil some water for coffee. Oh, he's boiling. All right, this fire is about 20, 25 minutes in, and as you can see, it's on the middle level now. And it's just going. It'll go for 40 minutes after this now. Oh. It's 
So I threw a couple sticks in there. Ready crisp bacon. Don't judge me, it's not the real stuff. But honestly, for camping, I usually go for this. And you know what? It's not half bad. Anything in the bush is always good. Hunger is the best spice of them all. Okay, we got some avocado. Even though it really doesn't need it from the bacon. You can never go wrong with a bit of butter. Ding. I've got a bagel. Just gotta make sure not to cut yourself. I remember when I was younger growing up, this was like one of the main ways people cutting themselves was slicing bagels. And then there was these like bagel slicing machines. They're like some big massive machine that would slice your bagels for you. I mean, obviously I could have used one with the skills I've just demonstrated, jeez. So we'll get that soaked up in a little bit of butter. Mmm, this bagel's seen better days. I've got my eggs in this container. It's way better than carrying them in one of those yellow containers. Uh, you could pre-spice them, just shake it up and it's perfectly scrambled. Place the bagel on top and on top. Ooh, yes. Look at this ginormous sandwich. So there's the inside right there. Now we're gonna add our bacon and avocado infused into the center. <laughs> Just when you thought we were done, we're adding more bacon. This is what I call a breakfast sandwich. <laughs> mm. Wow, this is fantastic. So I'm going to be simulating here how to self-rescue if you tip your canoe and capsize it and don't really have a way to get to shore. There's ways of doing it in a smaller canoe where you just lift it over your head and kind of throw it, but that requires a ton of strength and you might already be exhausted and not able to do it. And also, if you're in a 16-foot canoe like this, it's extremely hard to do. I'm going to show you the way that works best for me. And that's if you don't have anything besides a small baler bucket. You should always have some sort of baler bucket. The one I use is just this wax canvas, my foraging pouch, because it holds water. And generally I'll have this under the seat of my canoe or at the bow all the time. And it just holds miscellaneous stuff, water bottle, fishing lures, whatever. But if I ever were to capsize, then it's really easy to bail out water with this and it'll save your life. It holds water really, really well. Another thing that's vitally important is your life jacket, of course. Honestly, it's best to cover things bare bones because you start at the worst case scenario and you just build up from there. Okay, so I'm going to tip this canoe and I'm going to go in. First thing I'm going to do is try to get this paddle underneath um, the yoke and the thwarts and so I don't lose it. Then when I'm in the water, I'm going to swim to the bow or the stern of the boat and I'm going to try to lift it over my head as high as I can to drain the water and throw it to the side. So one thing uh, to make sure is if you try to lift it straight up, there's going to be a suction on the water. So you have to lift one side or the other to break that su suction first, lift up and try to throw. Honestly, when you throw it, you're going to use a lot of energy. So your best bet is to do it once, uh, the best you can, 
and then all other times after that will probably be less useful. So the first time you throw it, just swim to the side and then get your baler bucket and start bailing right away. You've got to bail out a decent amount of water. It's going to take some time and then you're ready to jump in. Cowabunga! Okay, the first thing is to not panic. Get your canoe paddle and put it underneath your yoke, between your yoke and your thwart or the front seat so you don't lose it. So there's a technique with canoes where you could go under the middle of it and lift it up and throw it over. It gets referred to as the Capistrano flip. And honestly, it requires a ton of strength. And this is a 16 foot canoe and I'm a strong guy and I can't even do it. So the way that works best for me is to go to the bow or the stern of the boat and you're gonna wanna lift it up overhead and kind of push as high as you can, tilt it on its side and with your second arm, your left arm, let it roll over. So if I try to lift it just like this, I won't be able to because there's a suction. So I've got to lift up one side of the canoe to expose it to air. Now I can lift it up a lot easier. Now the hard part's over. If you don't have a baler bucket, just go in with your hand and this is going to take a long time, but it'll work. Splash that water out. Now if you do have a baler bucket or something like the pack pouch, which I keep just random stuff in, fishing lures, etc. Use your pouch. It's worth taking some time at this step because you don't want to have to flip it again. All right, that looks decent to me. There's a couple inches of water in there, but I think I could do it. So I'm just going to tie this baler back in. You just snap it in. Okay. So now comes a very technical part. What I'm going to do is go the back side of the boat, where I'd be if I was solo canoeing, right where the thwart is. You grab onto your thwart and you grab onto your yoke. I'm going to pull myself and kick on an angle. And once I'm about halfway in, you're just going to dive in and throw your shoulder in there. Roll around and lie on your back. This technique is good going on your shoulder and then your back. Because if I were to go on my stomach, I'd just roll over to the other side. So. Here we go. Push that canoe paddle to the front. One, two. Skiddly diddly do. <laughs> Not super graceful, but I'm in. Make sure you don't flip. And now you're in. And now we still got a lot of water in here. It's still a bit unstable, but at least we're in and we start bailing now. You can see how a bail bucket is really useful. So there you go. That's the basic technique on how to self rescue. Thanks for taking the time. Hopefully you never get yourself into that situation. All right. Thanks for joining me, that was fun.
Perfect. Oh, yes. This will do. So I brought some supplies to make pizza, but I don't have enough good stones to make a good pizza oven. And uh, I have my cast iron, so I figure I'm gonna try just putting the pizza in the cast iron, and then I'll put this pretty flat, big stone on top and build the fire on top of this. Hopefully it'll heat it up enough and some radiant heat will come through the rock and cook that pizza. I've never done it like this before, but we'll see if it works. I kind of have the theory to also push the coals down around the side so it heats up kind of all around. Now, one thing to note, if you're getting rocks that are from the river or underwater or something, water's had a lot of chance to seep through the pores. And if you put them in direct heat, there's a chance they could pop. Big ones like this generally will just crack. There's not enough force to really send pieces flying. It's not really a big concern of mine. Anyways, that's just something to note. All right, there's our pizza topper. To make the pizza dough, we just need yeast, flour, sugar, salt, warm water, and I think that's it. Oh, a bit of oil, that's it. Uh, so warm water is one of the things. I have this little MSR rocket stove, I think it's called. I have a jet boil too, it's just, I find it takes up a good amount of space. So sometimes I just like using this thing. It's so small. Here I am talking about space and I have this giant tank, but Honestly, I've just gotten in the habit of using this guy. The only thing is you need to light it. This thing sounds like a jet plane. Holy. Turn on the afterburners. <laughs> Well, that looks about done. Let's do this. So, what do we have? We have our pizza sauce, we have flour, pepperoni, we got a red pepper, and we got our kind of sacrilege, ready crisp bacon. And of course, I put some yeast and salt and sugar into here and a bit of garlic powder too first things first into the pan she goes i think we'll go with maybe a cup and a half of flour maybe two cups and we'll add three quarter cup of warm water let's see how she mixes And a bit of oil. So the more you kind of knead it, knead, the more you knead the dough, the softer the crust will be and the less, the crunchier the crust will be. I like me a crunchy crust, so. So now, we're gonna let it rest for about an hour. Hopefully expand up a bit, go wash this off and we'll be back. All right. Oh, <laughs> nice. Wow. All right, time to get the hands dirty. That's a lot of dough. That is a lot of dough. Yes. <laughs> Does feel like pizza dough. Uh, so it starts sticking like that, you need a little bit more. 
I'm gonna clean out this cast iron. Put that in there. The best way I know to clean up the cast iron is to do it through a magic trick. So, ready? And ta-da! Beautiful. Let's oil this up. Good amount of oil. Uh-oh, there's a hole. I've gotta reform. I gotta regroup. Okay. Let's add some toppings, shall we? Tomato sauce. Some mozzarella cheese. Pepperoni. Bacon. A little bit more sauce. And some more chez. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna slice and dice this up and then roast it and then put it on top after. Let's get to cooking. So first, let's get the pizza in there. Now, this big old stone. And now we're gonna build our fire on top of that. It's time for the grand reveal. Figure my next step, pull this rock off and just let it cook over the fire now, just for a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Mmm. Mmm. That's nice. Nice and crispy. It's so good. Okay, now with pizza in my belly, and I'm feeling great, it's time to get out there and do a little brook trout fishing. It's eight o'clock, so I might only have an hour, but the evening's the best time for the bite, so let's do it. Multi-tool and headlamp. Cool, and I'll be sitting right here. Let's get her in.
Bite. Bite. Yes. Yeah, got one. Oh, it's a nice one. Nice one. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Hold it up for the camera. Wow. Oh, nice. Bone shaker. My fave. Figured it wasn't catching any fish, so might as well have a bit of fun. All right, tonight it's gonna be an early one for me. I'm not having a fire, I'm pretty tired. I'm just gonna wind her down and go to bed. I wonder if my owl friends are gonna visit me tonight. I don't know. I'm gonna crawl up in that cozy hammock and get some shut-eye. Catch you in the morning. Really looking forward to a good sleep. He's back. Hey buddy. These are barred owls. Beautiful birds. Guys, this one came to the ground. Oh my god, that was Mama. Came to feed him. Wow. Just fed on that mouse hole. Oh, that was so cool. Guys, that's got to be the coolest thing. Uh, so, I was videotaping these owls, they're two in the same tree, and then I could hear the flapping of like a third one coming in, and it flew to the same branch, and what I thought before that they were fighting was actually Mama bringing a mouse, and the bigger one bullied its way to grabbing it. Then it ate it whole. Oh my god, it was so cool. A mouse. I'm camping with two screaming babies right now. But this is just such a cool time. Hey buddy, wanna go to bed? Let's go to bed. You guys go check out the other side of the island, okay? I really like you, but it's time for me to go to sleep, okay? No, no, don't give me that. I get it, I'm in your forest, I'm in your home. I go to bed when you tell me to. Just magnificent birds, wow. I'm gonna watch these owls a bit more and then I'll try to shut her down whenever they decide to move along. <laughs> okay, have a good night. See you in the morning. Good morning. Oh, wasn't that a night? Wow. So cool. Okay. I think we're gonna try to get up. Honestly, I'm usually a morning person, but I was up from like 12.30 to 
three or four playing with the owls playing with my friends so I don't really have anything planned in terms of uh, doing anything for the day but I'll pack up slowly and get on the canoe and go back to the truck poor truck it sustained some damage on this trip <laughs> all right enough blabbering I'm gonna get up What do I have in my hammock pockets? I got a knife. A Mora knife. I got my headlamp. Some bear spray. That's it. Alright. Another beautiful day. Close it like this. Ta da! Ugh, oh, bit tired. Slow moving this morning. Better turn on the afterburners. Today we've got, uh, ooh, bougie. Starbucks. True North blend. Soft and mellow. To know it only makes black coffee. I do enjoy black coffee, but I find, especially while camping, I get a bit of acid reflex. I mean, I threw the powdered milk stuff in here, but I'm not entirely sure if that does anything. It feels like it does, so we'll just go with that. Okay, cheers. I guess I should also come clean about this. I've been living in luxury, folks. <laughs> a pillow. Yeah, I do enjoy the little comforts of camping when I am able to pack it in. Usually I'll just bunch up some sweaters and then use that as a pillow, but if I have extra space, this thing crumples down really small, folds into itself, I'll show you. Oops, it's in, oops, the, what the heck? Oh, there it is. There's some that crumple even smaller and then there's some that you just blow up with air. But I've had this thing for years and every time I go, if I have a little extra space, I'll just throw it in there. Especially if I'm portaging somewhere, like this was barely a portage. And then I had lots of space in the canoe, so he caught me red-handed with the luxuries of camping. I mean, that's not very small, but I should probably get a new one. I say that every time, and then I go back and I throw this all with my camping gear. I forget about it. And then next trip comes and I see this big red pillow sitting on top, and I got a small extra space for it, and I'm like, ooh, you're coming with me. Anyways, yep. Hey guys, I'm just going to show you my lantern setups and the reasons why I bring something like this. It's kind of big and bulky and this is an old one made in Czechoslovakia. I actually fill it up with citronella camp oil and this stuff is great because it keeps mosquitoes away. It's really easy to do. You just lift up the lamp like that and then this little guy, you twist, it'll bring out a little wick. You just light it up. Close it down and you have a beautiful little flame. I really, really like sitting next to a campfire with this. I usually just keep it at a low flame just like this. If you max it out, um, it'll start to 
have some incomplete combustion and just start to see how the top of the glass is a little bit darker. It's just uh, smoke that's inside that glass so I can clean it real easy but sometimes I'll want the full flame just to keep the mosquitoes away a little bit more if they're thick but mostly you just keep it down like that. And if this is way too big for you, you get a hold of some miniature versions. This is a really cool one and exact same features. All these old school lanterns have the same thing. Beautiful. And these are staples of mine. It, one, it keeps the mosquitoes away, but two, I just love the ambiance of a lantern around a camp. So yes, I do a lot of survival trips and adventures and really hardcore ones, but I also enjoy the comforts when I can, especially if you're canoeing into a campsite. We in Ontario have this awesome privilege of being able to canoe to a lot of sites. And with that, you could bring a little bit more gear. So these don't weigh much though. You just strap it to the back of your pack and he's really cool. Okay, and just to put it out, you just bring the flame down and omit it from oxygen. Oop. There we go. Good dry dead log right here. First, I'm just going to take my axe and just limb this. Make a bit of a safe working zone. It's a nice thing about being able to have your axe and saw with you in this little pack. This is the perfect stuff you want. All right, let's get back there. I'm just gonna stack a bunch of this wood that I split for the next person to come by. Try to leave this place better than I found it. Speaking of which, here's an old empty butane can. Uh, so I'll just take this back home. You're always gonna find stuff like this at campsites, empty cans, garbage and stuff. And that's all right, I mean, yeah, it sucks, but not everyone has the same values. Not everyone was taught to pack out what you packed in and to leave a place better than you found it. Um, but I think nowadays more and more people are of that mindset, which is really good. The best that I think any one of us could do is just try to live those values ourselves. And that's kind of what I try to do. So anyways, take this one home. Speaking of cans and such. I got this little can of tuna. I didn't eat breakfast and it's around two o'clock so I'm getting a little hungry and uh, I plan on leaving today so I wasn't gonna do up a fire and make a meal and stuff so I'm just gonna have this little can of tuna. I love these guys. This is, this is jalapeno flavored. Oops. Mm. It really doesn't look like much but Sure is delicious. And a little bit of birch. So I'm just paying it forward to the next person who comes to the site because someone graciously left me a ton of firewood at the beginning of my trip and I was super happy about that and I 
did need it desperately, so hopefully this helps someone else. All right, friends, no big extravagance. Sail off into the distance. Goodbye today. Um, I'm just going to end it here. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time.